Alright everyone and welcome back to Alien Noir. <clears throat> and uh, I fucked up a bit because I played for I'd say 45 minutes Fine morning indeed. somewhere around there and I uh, didn't realise I didn't have the mic like down to my mouth. Get the fuck. So first the letter and now I've done the whole thing. Come on, you can't keep on Went to make put the video together and then I noticed no, there was no all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. I can't you know what I'm turning into Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man. Right? You can't always hit home run. Sometimes you just gotta make first days. So as you can imagine, I was pretty peeled. <laughs> I sub asked me to do a longer video, so I couldn't believe it. The one time I do a whole 45 like minute but video, didn't have the mic like at my mouth. Love it. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m., but it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. Cold. California wouldn't know what cold is if a fucking polar bear smacked him in the face. Well, I love it's cold. I mean, we're not talking like Russia level, but <laughs> driver and our killer it's fucking cold. It's likely one and the same. Not right now, actually. We're actually, because we're mid summer, we're still getting some heat. Where is that? So, uh, I don't know how long I'll make this. Pick up the. Look at the. No drag marks. Killer was moving around, surveying the scene. So, I don't know how long I'll actually make this video. We'll see what happens. I couldn't believe it, man. There's only one time I've ever done that uh, before. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. And, uh, what do you call it? I only one time I've ever done that before, and it was on Bioshock uh, Infinite when I was playing that. I forgot to put the mic down at my head, down my head, on my, in front of my mouth. I recorded like 25 minutes <laughs> for the realising, and then I tried to like increase the fucking volume for my voice, and that's what I can try and pick up with it. I did say, but and I even contemplated, guys. This is just how much I love you, dudes, man. I was gonna just be like, "Fuck it, man." I would just, I would just upload it without commentary, but I can't, I can't do it. He's, he's have to hear my voice, whether he's like it or not. The first time I played this, I thought this was somebody coming to take my case. I was like, "No chance." My case. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt, 
horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Yeah, it sure is a trip. Oh, because normally when I go to the main menu, I just click res uh, resume and it just takes me straight into the game. But I had to go to the cases to get back a chapter, and it actually say it gives you like stars, which I never knew. Uh, to show you how well we've done, gotta say, not doing my best. <laughs> a few have got like four stars on, and some have got like two. But fuck it. How could I help, detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services, 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, Detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thanks. Let's roll Fenbar. You crazy son of a bitch. That's not my car. <laughs> Maybe I'm the cra I'm stuck. I'm the crazy one. Don't don't worry about me, mate. Oh Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe I'm not the crazy one. You're right up there, mate. What's happening? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You never let me down, big man. You're behind the wheel. Yep. Uh, Fine. Where are we headed? I'm going here. I went to the hobo camp the first time, straight away. Mate! What's happening? Oh, Jesus Christ! I'm gonna have to kick your ass. Get off of that bloody thing. Can you keep things under control until Pinker and Carruthers finish up? Sure, Detective. We'll there we go. Bloody hell. Psychopath. <laughs> He's up his nose. go over the case notes. No message. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written on them. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? Whatever you see, mate. Settled in. Before you know it, I'll be riding on top of the car. But yeah, I went to the hobo camp and then it was like, oh, he's not here, and then we left and I went to here, so. I know all jack shit will happen. At least the rain stopped. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case and one of your laundry labels came up. F1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. I love this. They clearly got the book, looked at it, went, oh fuck it man, I can't find it man, you do it yourself. Boom. <laughs> How hard was that? This is T. Terrellson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, you're not job you're gonna get in this team. Yeah. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, 
and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic type, so a particular oh. disposition for this stuff. I just remember something that happened in the last video that I wish you could have seen. God damn it, man, that was well good. If I get up to that bit and then when it happens, I'll tell you. I don't know if we'll do the same thing, but it was it was excellent. Son of a bitch, I completely forgot about that. Damn it, see, that's why I, that was my own fault, man. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Tarleton? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. Your wife's dead, mate. I'm afraid your wife <laughs> was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I try to be calm. Not tell you in front of the kids, but you were annoying me. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Tarleton, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that... It's procedure. You see to your girls. Sweet fan bar. Tell them. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. You can't. Eat. She's What's deep. the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. All right, here we go. Got nothing to hide. You want to hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bunks think filling out a mission first. To check if she was a regular. I wonder why the picture was turned down. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nothing in that. I don't think there's anything in this room if I remember rightly. Oh, he's a boat. He's a boatman. He's a sailor. He's a seaman. Bing bong. Bing bong. Ah, oh, yeah, we've already seen that. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Lars was out in the rain last night. We can see if Pinker can match the impression of the crime scene. Let me speed run in this shit. <laughs> Oh no, I failed to speed run it. I could have jumped over the... Oh, I'm going this way. And that last bogus. Looks like a match with the ligature marks. Oh, son of a bitch, the music hasn't stopped. See, that's what I was saying, like, I don't know if you need to look at the bogus clues as well to, like, to make the music stop, if you know what I'm saying. Because I don't think... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Ah, that's right, I remember where the last one is now. Move your ass. Wait. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. So she went out without her handbag? She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. At least she was spared that particular indignity. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, so the bogus clothes. Are exactly that, bogus. Galloway, you crazy fucking asshole. 
I'm gonna kick your ass one of these days. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. Bill. For the record, Terrell, did you kill your wife? Ugh. Oh my god. This is... No. I didn't kill my wife. And fuck you for suggesting it. Woof, okay, mate. What the hell I got? I pressed truth the last time, so I've managed to get it wrong twice in a row. I should have picked lie. God damn it. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right. Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin and calls me. I go and bring her home. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Spill oh, mate. You're, You're pushing my buttons. This, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. <laughs> What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. You're lying, Lars. Stop you bullshitting me. Home, did you? And how do you figure that? You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Mm -hmm. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Terrelson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to broads, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. We could break the husband's story right now. Call in, get some uniforms dispatched to check out his alibi. Fuck me the phone. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps. I've never done this last time. Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thank you. That was my bad. Never done that last time. I can't be listening to this guy. My partner would tell me he drives me off. Drive me up the wall here. Yeah. You're behind the wheel. Fine. Where are we headed? Do you believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. Galloway, LA nah, why no, I'm working. Club. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. 
What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 1030, I think. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about it. <coughs> Two club sandwich. Thank you, Lacey. She wants a five. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here, but nothing to fit that description. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. All right, two creeps were all over her, promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy? is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. <laughs> Red Dick Bates. Shirt. Seriously? I really let it come through. It's Mr. Bates. That's so close. It's Mr. Dick Bates. <laughs> Literally, that's so funny. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, no. I didn't get that. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. And she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Fluff. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. This is Bates. Oh, that's right. Point right to the guy you're that's interested it. in. Love it. LAPD. Gallery, you're an absolute treasure, so yeah. Can't let the son of a bitch get away. Hey. Go, Belch, get after it! Rock him on! Gotta ride! Oh, well, he's got his speed and running the shoes on here. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered? We could have a killer on our hands. Whoa! I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the victim. Coming through. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're stickless for routine. There's a jump coming up, and this. Don't go uh, to sleep on me. Give me back in close. This truck bounced. I'm not even joking. Like eight feet in the air when it jumped. <laughs> when they jumped off of it. Hit him, Cole. Spit him out. There was that jump there we just done. I swear to God, you wouldn't believe how high he bounced. Let's end this part. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. Hit it. Clean the off the road. That wasn't so bad either. All right. All right, you got it. Not quite as com uh, comedically effective. But well, what about <laughs> it? What the hell? Come on. Hands behind your head. Okay, Bates. You're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. All right, Mr. Bates, what are you going to say here? Uh... Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead, and your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Do you want my partner to sap you? <laughs> Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Oh, my Look, God. I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chance. Oh, just because you leisurely I stroll right through the right fucking right. town here and your motor. I'll explain my theory. Never mind the, the fact the fact that your name is Dick Bates. <laughs> and you're done for sexual well. assault. Seriously. Richard here knows the drill. How does that then say joke and rockstar? 
Not what I'm thinking. Alright, let me see if I can get this uh, taxi number. That was one thing I did when I forgot. I forgot to check uh, to see if I could trace this taxi. Phelps badge twelve forty seven. How can I help, detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number thirty five ninety one. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car eleven K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks for your help. I was opening these, I don't see any... Uh, is that a lock on that, bad boy? Oh, maybe there is, I don't know. I say, nowadays you can't... I barely ever see them now, but... I have a public telephone without them getting fucked up. You know the way, you can drive. And where exactly are we going? I'm probably going to have to go to the hobo camp, like, again, but I can't go. I know, all you do is you, <laughs> you drive up and it's like, oh, he's not here, let's go. And then you drive to the next place. He's in interview two. I used to be in the Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Good. He should know he's in trouble. Dealing with Phelps and Galloway here. Detectives Phelps and Galloway. I didn't want to. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm yep. proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Man, I need to stop paying attention. I never had that either. And inform the commander. Sure, detective. I remember him saying my CO said as much, but I don't remember him saying check with the, the, the cab. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. So can I use a telephone down here somewhere? Because where's that an eye? Let's see, come all over the place here. Hmm. Because uh, ah, oh, screw it. Wait, what's this? Oh, it's the same thing. You can drive. Bye. Where are we headed? I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Well, do you think we ought to? I guess we ought. Three suspects in the can and one on the hook. And still no hard evidence on any of them. Go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bob 
Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Plenty of time to get downtown, Paul. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, we have Lars Carrollson picked up. 11K, roger. This is cool, man. I'm seeing, like, a different part of the game because I'm doing things differently. Like when I made the call in the guy's house, I never done before. That, like that never happened. That bad dialogue. I don't recognize this guy. He's always a scumbag and whatever he's in. LAPD. We'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. I need you to stay for the seven. We need to hold out for the How do we do that? Right here. Yeah. Come yeah. on, ahead. If Bring you one. want your right to know they're harboring a murderer. Oh, man. I'm pissed. Oh my god, he's got me a couple of times. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. Don't be so sure, pal. I am a mean mother. The Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it, see what you find. It's still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Vincent, this is Courtney Sheldon. It's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine, too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them, that they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors, but they've been moving it on to addicts. And they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying. And that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. I'd say, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained, Jack. How are you going to try and go to town with these gang? I thought it was gangsters, it's a secret to say. To this kind of shit, Sheldon. Hmm. Alright. I say, I keep forgetting a little bit of this stuff. I feel like I'm just, like, it's a wee tight storyline, we're just focused on the serial killer. Well, I'm convinced it's the serial killer. But then there seems to be others, I mean, the doctor and the, the gangsters and all this crap in the background, it seems to be happening, but we've not really touched on that at all, apart from these newspapers. I don't know if it's separate, like, we're going to investigate it or, or what. I'm not really sure what's happening there. Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrellson's chin. Quit 
not sure what that is. Teresa, is that TT? Oh, it doesn't look like T's. T's. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. Mm -mm. Isn't that the cop who caught the guy who's getting to get? What are you looking at? See, like, there's no Keep phones here to check in for that, but uh, where exactly are we going? To check for the cabby. The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession. We can charge the bum with murder. I don't know if I need any of you for them now. I'm thinking of going this way. Five. I want to stop him one round. Let's see. How am I <laughs> going this way? This. I want to put him down one way. Outside. Ackerman, you were in the Marines. All right, you crazy son of a bitch. The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government? Puts weight like that on a man's shoulders. I'll show you one. You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Why did you kill Mrs. Terrellson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. You hate women, Ackerman. More than you could ever imagine. How much did you hate Mrs. Terrellson? I ache to put my seed in them. Afterwards, I have no use for them. Oof. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrellson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed. But I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrellson. Boom. A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And the grand results you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. I mean, fast becoming. We're already there. Are you kidding, pal? There you go. Case notes. Even the cabbie who was among the last to see Teresa Tarleton Ter alive. I've seen every witness count. So, at what point there was I supposed to find the cabbie? I don't understand that. <sighs> anyway, let's go. Oh yeah, there you go, this is the wee desk, well normally I like so I don't really, but anyway that will do it for this episode, I'll wrap it up nicely and then I can resume back from the, straight off from the next case, 
So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.